Hi, Steve Goff from the Washington Post. Uh, question for Greg, and I guess Tim could maybe chime in too as well. Uh, when you look at this roster and the, the clubs that the players are coming from for the U.S. team, um, some of the seasons that the players are, have experienced um, and thrived, um, how, do you, how do you assess this group and, and the level of um, quality that, that is there heading in to this tournament and then into the summer? earpiece um, no it's, like you said when when you look at, at the roster um, you look at the, the squad that, that is here um, and even some of the guys that, that aren't here it's it's a, an incredibly talented group of players um, one that you know I think is as coach said was was one of the most difficult to put together um, and you know to, to watch everybody perform from my point of view and you know as, as, as a player uh, seeing them perform throughout Europe is um, it's just so impressive, you know, to, to see the number of guys who are doing well, and um, and then to see him bring that into into the camp and into this um, into these games and, and going into the summer is uh, you know is, is a good position to be in. Yeah, I would. I mean, the only thing I'll add is that um, as Tim mentioned, when when we were picking the roster, it was it was really difficult, and then when we had to replace two players, the players we were replacing with, you know, had just scored a goal in the Bundesliga and, and has double digit goals in the championship in England. So it shows the, the quality in this squad um, and, and watching every week um, to see our guys performing well is a great feeling for us as coaches. You know, we're so proud of what they're doing and, and, and what type of people they are. Doug McIntyre, Fox Sports. Hi, Greg, questions for you. Talk about the the depth you have. When you, I know you're not looking past the game tomorrow, um, but with the tight turnaround, you know, is there a thought that you want to try to utilize the whole roster and, and rotate and get fresh legs in, so uh, you know, so you're fresh in both games? No, I'm smiling because we know how difficult these games are, and I think um, you know, for us, it's avoiding complacency, being focused, and, and doing our business, and and we know how much we want to win our third title. And we're going to put everything into each game. Um, you know, now is not the time to start um, resting on our laurels. We want to be focused, and um, and we want to win this game in advance of the final. And like you know, six months being back, um, what's it like managing these guys individually, collectively, and just planning and managing camps socially? What's that been like? And the second question. Um, you said after you returned that attacking set pieces was going to be a point of emphasis in terms of improving from the World Cup. Um, how do you view that progress? And what, if anything, have you done differently in camps to, to try and sharpen that as you get closer to big games and big tournaments? Thank you. Well, I, th I think the, the running joke from me in, in the first cycle was that most of the the guys were closer in age to my oldest son than, than they were to me. Um, so to see them grow and mature over that cycle, and now they are the guys who are, are helping kind of that, that next generation come through, um, it's, it's been really impressive to see how, how much they've matured, um, how much they've taken on board, how much they've learned, um, and, and taken that into their, their own you know club seasons and, and club performances. So. Um, you're seeing a lot. I'm seeing a lot more guys who are, who are more mature. Um, you know, have have a lot deeper meaning conversations and, and understanding of, of what we're doing, um, what you know, what Greg and the and the staff want. And um, it's nice to be able to to continue on in that path um, and in that vein and, and see them, uh, you know, really get the best out of themselves um, and, and push themselves to the next level. Yeah, and I think um, off the field, it's nice to see you know how they're maturing and growing, and, and some of them now have young families and, and children, and and that um, you know that's um, especially gratifying because we've worked with them for a long time now, five years, and just to see that process um, has, has been really good up close. In terms of set pieces, you know I don't think it's only the work we're doing in camp. You know, we're doing work out of camp. Uh, we formed a group that is working outside of camp um, with the players and, and going over offensive set pieces, getting their ideas, working, um, you know, giving them a lot of responsibility of how do we get better. 
We also have a set piece coach um, who's been doing it the longest in the world. Gianni Vio is his name from from Italy. He worked with Tottenham lately. Um, recently, he was with Italy when they won the Euros. Um, and and he's experienced. And now it's just pull, push, pulling that all together, being um, understanding that it's a process, that things aren't going to necessarily happen. You know, from one game to the next, not that you just flip a switch and, and you're a great set piece team. But we're putting in the work, and we want to get better. And um, you know, I, I see the guys we saw in training today. They were they were really aggressive in set pieces. So we'll we'll see what happens. Hi, Greg. John Arnold from Getting Concacaft. Jamaica has a number of players missing. A couple guys suspended. Leon Bailey, who they chose not to bring in uh, today. Mikel Antonio withdrawn from the team. Wondered how that can change your preparation for a game understanding that there's still going to be challenges and also the fact that they might end up putting in guys who maybe you don't have as much tape on and that kind of thing. What, what challenges can it pose to sometimes see different faces maybe in a game like this? You know, it puts us on higher alert. Um, you know, no question about it for us. We're not taking this team lightly. And now with these guys missing, you know, it's even more serious because we know uh, the, ten the, p the tendency. But we also know, and I spoke to the team about this today, the guys that are going to get their opportunity tomorrow night, they're going to be giving everything to show this coach they want to be part of the squad for Copa America. So it's a dangerous game um, for us. And you know, again, we're going to be really focused on, on trying to play a good game and, um, and get to the final. Thank you. Michele Giannone from Univision in TUDN. Hi, Greg. It's for, for you. This might be a dumb question. We'll see. Follow, following up, um, John, Jamaica is missing a lot of key players. So when you're analyzing them, is it harder to analyze a team that is missing the most known players and the players that you might maybe know best? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because we went through the roster today and we're going around the room and asking the players, you know, about about what they know personally about the Jamaican players, because a lot of them play with play with these players. A lot of them know them from England. You know, they're well known to our, our player pool. So again, you know, we think that the quality um, that they have is still good. They're missing their top talent, but they still have enough, um, you know, to, to be a very competitive team and a very difficult team. And we know of these events, you know, we know when CONCACAF teams play each other, they're very difficult games. So we expect the same thing. And we know Jamaica's a robust team. We know they're going to fight till the end. You know, we saw that against Canada in the, in the quarterfinals of the Nations League. So, you know, we're preparing for a very difficult opponent tomorrow. Hi, Coach. Uh, Tim Francisco Villalobos from Televisa Univision. Easy and a hard question. Who wants the easy one? Who wants the hard one? Be honest. It doesn't matter. You're the We're captain. Well You'll get the hard one. We're well trained. The, uh, the, the United States faces a situation that has never faced in at least in decades where they're qualified for Copa America, they're qualified for the World Cup for being the host nation, and obviously because of the, the way that you guys got here to the Nations League. How, I asked this to the coach in Mexico. How does this tournament prepare you for the next level, and from that level, to the next one, where you are building up on each one, which is what is your plan to get from this particular pr uh, project for this particular tournament to apply it to Copa America, and uh, other than obviously winning the cup, like meaning tactical, uh, mentally, et cetera, what say you? And the easy one for you, Mr. Tim, uh, the United States uh, tends to, uh, in this part of the country, there's usually more people that are, are rooting for the for the visiting team. However, there's as demographic changes, there's more and more children, uh, children of those of those folks that are born here that have never touched South, South America, and they're rooting for MLS teams. What say you? How does as USA players try to cultivate those new fans and get them to root for USA rather than the countries where their parents and their grandparents came from? We're gonna answer in reverse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, we've we've had that discussion uh, as as a group, as um, you know, as players, and um, you know, we have an opportunity to, you know, change 
the, the game in, in this country. Um, we have an opportunity to convert fans, to convert you know youngsters, um, and and not necessarily convert them, but but bring them more on board. Um, and and that's our job as as players, as role models, as people. Um, you know, to to put ourselves out there to. Um, you know, to bring these to bring these youngsters and and you know maybe convert others to to you know rooting for the U.S. Um, as you said, a, a lot of them have not set set foot in, in South America, and um, they they obviously know the best players in the world. They know that the best players that come from South America, but but their home is is the U.S. And and for us, we want to we want to make sure that that we're putting on on good performances, that we're playing well, um, that we're presenting and representing ourselves, um, but also representing the country in in a very positive way. And and hopefully that you know that gives them you know a, a team players and, and a group to that they can aspire to potentially to potentially be like, but also to really support and and root for um, each and every time we play. You know, and for us, um, we're using this tournament as as a pivotal part of our preparation for the World Cup. We're using Copa America. We're using, you know, these high-profile friendly games that we have, um, because you know the way we look at it is elimination games and playing against the best teams in the world are going to prepare us for 2026. When we don't have qualifying, you say, okay, what what else is there? And it's clearly Nations League, knockout competition, a chance to win a trophy. Um, Colombia, Brazil, big, big profile friendlies before the summer, and then Copa America, the you know the oldest, one of the most regarded tournaments in the world. Again, help prepare us for, for 2026. Hello, sorry. Hello, Coach Carlos Nava from ESPN. Coach, how important is to win this kind of game to continue with the development exactly for the golden you have 2026 and for team. Um, in this uh, team, particularly, there are 21 guys playing in Europe. So is this talking about the development of the soccer in the United States or MLS players? So how do you view as a player these kind of national teams? Yeah, listen, uh, we, we always talk about it doesn't matter where we're where guys are playing, um, if they're playing at a high level, um, you know, contributing at, at their club um, and, and being leaders with, within their club um, and, and then coming into into the national team and, and contributing and, and being part of a, a bigger group, a, a brotherhood, as, as we call it. And, um, you know, you look at, like you said, the 21 of us that, that do play in Europe, I think it does show there's there's a lot more, you know, development, a lot more guys who are willing to, to push themselves and, and um, really step out of their comfort zones um, and and make moves to Europe and, and really try to try to make a career out of um, you know being away from uh, a home um, and and I think you're we're seeing you know and, and reaping the rewards of that you know guys who are, who are wanting to make that jump um, and, and you see it every every day um, every time we come into camp guys guys have developed a little bit more they're a little bit more stronger a um, little bit more developed mentally um, they understand the, the ups and downs and um, yeah, I think it's again going back to to saying we're inspiring a, a generation that comes behind us and behind them. Um, I think it's it's important that that we, you know, we have that representation in in Europe. Um, but I think it's more important that guys are contributing each and every single day, each and every single week. Um, you know, getting getting match, um, you know, important matches under their belt um, and continuing to to develop um, as as professionals and as people. Yeah, it, it's, of course it's a goal of ours to win the Nations League. Um, I think it's a goal of all four teams involved in this tournament. And we know it's not going to be easy. We know it's a lot easier to say than actually do. But one thing I know is our guys have worked so hard um, throughout the year with their clubs. It, it's nice to get them back. And um, you know we deserve to win a trophy together. And it would be, it would be nice to get our, our third title. We are going now with some virtual questions. Hector Lasseri. Hector? Thanks, Glassy for Clara Sports. I wanted to ask both of you. Um, Yamika has a lot of absences right now, but they have a lot of players in, in Europe, in, in England, in Germany, many different uh, places. Do you think they are the second most talented uh, national team, top from bottom, top to bottom, the one through eleven, uh, maybe after the US, if they were all healthy or available? Thanks. 
it's not really our job to assess that publicly. You know, I think that's that's your job. That's to this group's here. Um, they can deal with that. You know, for us, we have an opponent. Um, we respect our opponent. We want to beat our opponent and, and go on to to win the Nations League. Um, you know, I'm sure Tim's familiar with a lot of the players from England, um, and and that's the way it is. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's any uh, you know any point in us in in analyzing and saying oh this this squad's better that squad's better um, this squad's number one this squad's number four it's. You know, you, you take, and it's, it is cliche, but you take each and every game and, and you analyze each and every opponent um, individually and collectively, um, you know, as, as the game comes. So um, just because you have, you know, a lot of guys who come from England um, or, you know, a lot of guys come from whatever league they're coming from, it's uh, like, like Coach said, it's, it's not our job to, to say who's, who's better and, and who's worse. Um, it's our job to, to go out and, and win games. Ronald Bloom. Hey, Greg. Uh, another question just about the balance with Europe and MLS. I think since you've been back with the full player pool, only two of 66 starting spots have been MLS players, and I think just five in 10 games since the World Cup. Is it that the strongest U.S. players are no longer in the league and have gone to Europe? Because it's been all times of the year, so I would think it's not just fitness levels. No, I mean, it, I think, again, um, you know, I can't speak highly enough of, of Major League Soccer and, and its role in, in both um, setting the standard for, for professional leagues in, in North America with the facilities, with the stadiums, with the level of competition, um, and then also youth development. And, and we've said all along, you know, if you look at our roster, how many guys have come from MLS clubs that are currently on the roster right now? So although they may not be currently playing in Major League Soccer, Major League Soccer has a huge impact on our player pool and always has, um, you know, since its inception. So, you know, we're we're grateful for the role of Major League Soccer. We work closely with all the academies, with with the first teams of a lot of teams, and um, you know, if a guy's good enough to to break into the to the lineup, it doesn't matter where he plays. One last Thank question you. with Andrew Jones. Thank you very much. First for Greg, um, Johnny Cardosa, he came to camp. How was he doing in terms of his fitness, in terms of full availability? And how did you write who you brought in as not only for his merits as a player, but him knowing his Coventry teammates and Joel Lesberry and Casey Palmer? How's he been as a scout for you there? And Tim, we had a good talk with Jedi about Anthony Robinson talking about Bobby Reed, him being one of the jovial guys in the locker room talk about your bond with him and whether you want to be a coach one day without analytical you are up there with it, breaking it down just like Greg. Yeah, we, um, as, as Greg said, we, we you know, had uh, a, a meeting and, and, you know, a lot, a lot of us, you know, were, were able to speak up because we've, um, you know, we've played either against or with, um, you know, a good number of guys who play for Jamaica and, um, you know, Love Bobby. Uh, I've played with him for for the last three years now, and um, he is he's he's you know an upbeat guy, great character, um, and and I'm sure everything that that Jed Jed said I'll I'll just be repeating. So um, yeah, it's you know it'll be it'll be interesting to to be on the other side and, and playing against him. But uh, again, we like I said we we played against a lot of these guys um, you know throughout the years in in England, and um, in terms of. Being analytical and, and coaching, I'm I'm an analytical person. I, I do break things down and, and you know try to look at look at every angle. And um, I don't know that coaching is is in my uh, is in my future, but um, I'll I'll never close a door before it opens. So we'll we'll see what happens there. He'll stay involved in soccer. You can count on that. <laughs> Um, so about Haji, we're talking about that. Yeah, Haji was was helpful in, in giving information about the two players that he, that he plays with. Um, you know, he's look he's looked good in training. Johnny arrived last night. We um, we had to get him an MRI in Spain. He had to pass a fitness test today, um, and he will be on on the final roster. And we'll just have to see how he continues to progress.